So now we are discussing about uh, some of the eco-friendly cutting fluids in this course that is introduction to machining and machining fluids. So that means that we are in the second part of machining fluids. Later on we will go again back to the multipoint and abrasive process. So before that we will see what are we are going to study today's class that is various uh, vegetable based cutting fluids or vegetable oils, uh, synthetic and semi-synthetic cutting fluids and the liquid CO2 and N2 since we have already touched liquid nitrogen and all those things we do not talk much about this but we will give the glimpse and the synthetic and semi synthetic bio cutting fluids we will see so then the bio cutting fluids what are the commercially available bio cutting fluids and all those things and then we will go to the conclusions of today's class ok. So vegetable oils are the vegetable based cutting fluids which we are already saw two type of vegetable oils in the previous class. Now we are moving forward to another variety or some of the varieties which will have the similar things that is one of the things is sunflower oil. So which is one of India's abundant cooking oil or biodegradable oils that you can see. So the basic uh, thing see all the oils will have similar type of things. So some of the oils I will tell the composition and some of the oils just I will skip off. So it consists of palmitic acid that is 4 to 9 percent, stearic acid 1 to 7 percent and olic acid 14 to 40 percent. Then linoleic acid is 48 to 70. So it is a compressed of linoleic acid should is the highest content. It is also contained lactium and these other type of waxes also which helps in lubrication basically. So kinematic viscosity at 40 degree centigrade is around 40 meter square per second and viscosity index is about 2.6. If you are looking for the operations where the viscosity index or the kinematic viscosity falls in this region, you can choose it as your own. So relative density varies between uh, 0 0.918 to 0 0.923 at uh, 20 degrees. The pore point and flash point are 12 degrees minus that is a negative 12 degrees and 250 degrees. This is uh, and normally this is used for cooking oils. The primary purpose of the people will use it cooking oils. Whenever you take it, if you can consume it, then the emissions are the adverse effect that are there. If it is not causing much, since it is a biodegradable oil, so it won't harm you if you are using as a one of the ingredients of the cutting fluid. Oven creates good kinematic viscosity and used in metal cutting fluids. A, because of its good kinematic viscosity, normally it is used as a good metal cutting fluid which reduces the friction between the work pieces and the tool. As I said no, it reduces the friction because it contains the waxes. Okay. So the wax is better lubricant like creases, waxes, this is the better lubricants. So if you have proper lubricating properties then the tribological properties will be high. As we have seen that the lubricants will help in tribological or friction and the cooling which is water based will help in the cooling process. So sunflower if you see the comparison of CO2 and uh, you know NOx and SOx other things. These are all also used in the four wheelers or two wheelers whatever the engines are combustion type of testings they have done for the sunflower oil and they have tested that socks and knocks are not that much ok. Sunflower oil if you see the CO2 emissions sunflower oil exhibit the least carbon emissions at elevated temperatures ok and compared to the wrap seed oil, cotton seed oil and these are the other varieties of the oils that we have not touched but compared this is slightly better that's why it has a having a better combustion characteristics. If you see the NOx emissions, NOx emissions are intermediate and the blending mechanism can help reducing them. That means that if at all somebody want to use it as a bio lubricant or bio combustible oils, what will happen if you can blend it with respect to the whatever the fluid that you are going to subject it to the chemical compatibility, you can reduce the NOx emissions. The second one which we are going to see today is jetrophile. Jetrophile has a good application in the metal cutting as you can see here but we will come back to the tool wear and all those things using Jetrofa. If you see the comparisons of comparison it uh, comprises of the hydrocarbons 
are the stereo esters that is 4.8 triglycerols are 82 and which is a major constituent and free fatty acids monoacrylglycerol these are not diacrylglycerol these are all the other things so on an average what i want to say is it contains the major amount of triglycerols so fatty acids include olic acid and uh, other palmitic acid and stearic acid these are the other acids which it contains very less percentage is there so that's why we are not talking about the mystic acid the kinematic viscosity at 40 degrees is 47.48 that meters per, per second and viscosity index is 208 the pore point and flash point are like this the kinematic viscosity value gives a positive effect on the lubrication capacity of the fluid again if you see this one so it is also a good cutting fluid for if at all you are looking for the lubricating purpose so it has a potential to be used as a biodiesel also normally many people not only uses uh, for metal cutting operation they also uses for biodiesel production how this jetrophile is produced if you see normally this jetrophile is produced from jetropha seeds jetropha seed this is a life cycle how it goes seeding will be taking place maturing then just you get the fruits from the fruits then then the, the ripened fruits will come from the ripened fruits normally you will get uh, seeds from the seeds you will get this jetrophile okay so jetrophile we are seeing that it is a better lubricant from the manufacturing point of view but from the thermal point of view for the automobile point of view it is also used as a biodiesel if you check the performance that is a machining performance milling of aluminum alloy 7050 t7451 has been performed using jetrofa cutting oil then it is observed that it proves that higher lubricating power of jetropile because of the cutting forces increases at higher feed rates they can be controlled by the lubricant that means that if you are using the jetrofiles at higher uh, cutting whenever the input conditions are very high at like uh, feed is very high and depth of cut is very high normally force will be very high at that time rubbing action will be taking place because assuming that the cutting speeds are low in that circumstances there is a tribological wear between tool and workpiece there this worked as a better one that means that it act as a lubricant basically you can see the abrasion wear normally the jetrofa the canola semi synthetic and synthetic semi synthetic and synthetic will come across so as per the study is concerned if you see the abrasion is very minimal or comparable to other processes okay and this jetrofoil is also not much costly you can afford it okay you can purchase it and you can do some of the people who are interested to carry out the work they can play with this one along with uh, suitable additives okay so castor oil if you see the castor oil castor oil is exclusively highly abundant oil in terms of in, in the regions like uh, southern part of india and uh, some parts of north india also this has a tremendous applications from the manufacturing to thermal to biomedical and other applications okay so if you see how do you do the agriculture normally agriculture plantation usation and if you see every part of this castor plant normally will have lot of application like straw stem leaf everything will have its own application you can see the leaf sericulture normally the warm silk worms and all those things that you can feed it and all those things if you take towards the industrial applications which we are talking about there oil extraction all kinds of castor oil you know polymer medicine fine chemicals many many locations it will be used apart from this you can also use in machining that is conveyed by the researchers okay you can also use this in the machining and it is performance is also tested okay but those people who are interested in performing the experiments here you can take this as a challenge and you can test it as a lubricant coolant by using various whether it is miscible or immiscible with water if it is not immiscible then what type of uh, emulsifiers you have to use what type of anti rusting you have to use and all those things. why i am telling this is castor oil is so economical fluid that you can get at in certain parts of india 
I am not telling about the pure medicated one. If you go to the manufacturing zone where uh, this is crushed, that uh, castors uh, seeds they will put there and they will just rotate it and all those things. Including, I saw practically in my village or nearby towns that these castor oils are so cheap that normally when we used to get we used to get uh, 50 rupees or 100 rupees per liter i am telling about if you go to that manufacturing person where it is a small house where they will be rotating it and just you take it and you can the raw and fresh one will be maybe much better because so you can filter out and you can use if you don't filter out also no problem because the shell of the castor may not uh, be that much effective enough to change the surface roughness of your component or something. So, what I mean to say is that this is an economic oil. If you want to test, you can test with these fluids along with some additives. That is the bottom line regarding the castor oil is concerned. It contains this is the composition and uh, if you kinematic viscosity, if you everywhere. I am talking about the composition and kinematic kind of viscosity that I am not talking much about all these things. What I want to emphasize here is it is an excellent emulon that is nothing but the smoothening. Okay? So, many people it will use for smoothening application. See people in the villages and all people they will apply to the their bodies for making it smooth and lubricating property. It is a better lubricating properties and ability to wet and disperse this. Okay? It will disperse easily at the same time it has a beautiful lubricating property. If my machining require more lubrication and less cooling you can go ahead. You can choose the castor oil as a choice. So, used in manufacturing for multipurpose lithium and calcium greases. So, lithium calcium greases are manufactured from this one. Okay. So, hydrogenated castor oil known as the castor wax is used as a high performance aviation grease. Okay. If it is used in the aviation grease where the temperatures are so high, so why can't you use in the machining applications. Okay. However, it is uh, just a wax form they are using. You can use before wax form that is a lubricant or the liquid form you can use as a cutting fluid. Okay. So, next we go to jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is a mixture of long chain of wax esters. Here itself uh, you have seen the wax that nothing but 36 to 46 in carbon atoms that is a long chain esters consisting of fatty acids and attached to the alcohol and ester bond. Okay? It has the alcohol and ester bond. Okay? The principal fatty acids are this, this, this and this is the kinematic viscosity and viscosity index is about uh, 233 serves well as a grinding and broaching oil suitable for high speed machining application that means this particular jojoba oil contains better cooling properties sorry rather than the lubricating properties but some of the sentences if you see here high speed machining where we have already seen whenever the speed is very high cutting speed is very high what will happen temperature also in the machining region goes high that is why if you can use this you will reduce it it will act as a coolant and it reduces the machining region temperature that is what about this high temperature applications if you are looking at you can choose the jojoba oil if you are looking at the lubrication castor oil. So, again Another commonly available nobody will eat this uh, seed that is called Karanja seed which normally if you see in the villages it is commonly available. Okay. So, people do not eat this. Okay. Okay. So, if you are getting at free of cost you can get and crush it. I am not saying that you have to develop it. You can give and take the oil from this one. Okay. So, Regarding the composition and uh, how the kinematic viscosity and all those things are about like this. So, the speciality about this one is serves well as a lubricant 
and used in soap making and tanning industries okay this will be a good lubricant so that means that it has uh, poor lubrication properties and you have it is poor cooling properties and having the better lubricating properties also used as a suitable substitute for diesel okay some of the papers are there biodiesel development by karanja seed oils and all those things so the emissions also are not that much if the emissions are not that much you can also use for the applications of cutting fluids also it has a medicinal property of uh, curing skin diseases and all those things that means that by and large if the workpiece is rotating at uh, certain speed and all those things if you are using karanja seed oil as your cutting fluid what will happen if it falls on you if mineral oil falls on the human or the operator's hand or something contact dermatitis and all those things will come in the mineral oil place if you are using karanja seed oil what will happen if it falls if you have the skin disease on top of it i mean to say that because of the splashing the purest form of karanja seed oil falls what will happen it won't be negative effect rather it will have a positive effect that is if you have any skin diseases or something just and it will give the smoothness also so that is good so it is a good oil from the health point of the operator as well as from the lubricating point of the machining process that's why you can go for this oil as a substitute for the mineral oil okay you can see the karanja seeds here so these are the karanja seeds normally which are available uh, on the trees so it is freely available in many parts of india so it may not be that much uh, costly however as the biodiesel is coming up in a great way maybe the cost might be going up so you have to check it so neem oil if neem oil is another one which is you, you can use as a cutting fluid neem oil is you can generate the neem oil from the neem seeds as the leaves also many varieties stems also the neem oil has a lot of medicinal if the neem oil falls on the operator also it will be better like karanja seed oil so if you see the composition it comprises of triglycerides and contains many tri it peptides and compounds responsible for bitter taste actually you know if you eat whenever there is some problem in the stomach or gums or something parents used to tell just go and have some neem leaves so that it may have it and if you go to the villages also many people use the neem stem as their uh, brush so that that helps in terms of gum bleeding and all those thing that that shows the beauty about the neem tree uh, what are the medicinal values and all those things okay so it uh, fatty acids present neem oil or linoleic acid that is oleic acid and palmitic acid and stearic acid these are the traces that are present in the neem oil so this will have be hydrophobic in nature and has to be emulsified in the water purpose so this is a hydrophobic in nature we have seen what is the hydrophobic and what is the hydrophilic and all those things this liquid itself is hydrophobic that means that it tries to have form some hydrophobic nature it may not have the philic nature that means that it may not spread properly if at all i required spreading and all those things you have to use certain emulsifier certain other ingredients suitably the other thing normally you can see the pore point of the neem oil and all those things is so the speciality about i am just concentrating on the blue ones because uh, i just highlighted because the uh, every oil if i start telling the composition viscosity viscosity index and all those things it will maybe like uh, slightly getting bored that's why i am emphasizing on the speciality of this one from the point of manufacturing or mechanical engineering so that you can appreciate what is the beauty about the that particular cutting fluids or that particular oil so possess excellent cooling property and that means that you can use for cooling also so that means whenever you are going for slightly higher speeds and all those things you can use this one used in medicinal 
applications as well. That means that it should be vice versa. If at all generalized we are studying, normally this is used in the medicinal, then metal cutting. Since we are studying the metal cutting, we will say that it can be also used in the medicinal. So that means that it has a good cooling property. That's why some of the people uh, uses it as a hair oil also in small proportions along with their other oils. But uh, only problem here is that if you are going, it may slightly smells in a not good way. Okay, so that doesn't mean doesn't matter. Okay. So another one is a palm oil. If you can see the palm seeds and all those things, these are the palm seeds. So it has a balanced oil containing 50% of saturated and 50% of unsaturated fat. It's the beauty about is 50% saturated and 50% unsaturated fat is there, and the kinematic viscosity. These are all there. Four point. And if you see the speciality about this one, it is used as an anti-wear hydraulic fluid. Are chain bar fluid and lubricant in textile and food processing industry. That means that it has a better lubricating properties. So the lubricating properties, if at all looking, then you can go for the palm oil. When used in the milling of AISI 420 stainless steel, palm oil yields longer tool life. That is 162.3 approximately minutes and surface roughness of 0.31 compared to flood cooling. And dry cutting, which gives around uh, life around uh, 40 minutes and uh, 35 minutes, where the surface roughness is 29.29 and 0.24 values. That means, if you see from the point of surface roughness, it is not giving better than the flood and dry cooling. But whenever you see from the two life. it is giving you a better value so the if the not see there is no much difference between 0.31 and 0.29 surface roughness it may go if the customer comes and tells in a tolerance if he says plus or 0.3 plus or minus 0.2 then you can go between 0.28 to 0.32 in that's your 0.31 will come so there is no much change in the surface roughness it is you can say that the minimal surface roughness variation is there but if you see the tool life it is tremendously high that's how you can improve the performance of your machining process so this is about the palm oil now we have seen till now the various oils vegetable oils plant based oils and all those things now we will move to synthetic and semi synthetic bio cutting fluids so the basic problem if you see in the vegetable oils is low flash point that is the biggest drawback because these are all will have low flash point and if you see bio based cutting fluids perform better than the mineral oil based products in terms of prolonged to life whatever the bio based cutting fluids i'm talking about better chip breaking ability lower tool wear that is tool wear reduces that means the tool life obviously will increase and cutting forces are low that means if the forces are low the power requirements are low okay so if you see which is the thing normally the another problem that this one is it heat resultant and interfaces generates the mist which is harmful for the machine operator some of these oils will generate some smoke type of thing if you can see here this is another thing okay so there is pros and cons but this emissions which the smoke that is coming may not be that much harmful for the operator however the visibility of the operator may be disturbed due to this one you can see the smoke here the smoke is coming and all those things so the first variety of synthetic and semi synthetic is if you can see here it is ester oil pan tetra mmp ep oil this is the standard names actually so the now we will come to the ester oil so synthetic based oil that is chemically synthesized the first and foremost thing is it is chemically synthesized 
okay it is not the natural one derivative it is a derivative of carboxylic acid which contains coh group and in an ester hydroxyl and group is replaced by the hydrocarbons basically you can see the ester group here so it is volatile in nature as the polarity of the ester molecules causes them attract each other so slightly it is volatile in nature that means that it may evaporate if there is a slightly temperature is very high in the machining region the intermolecular attraction requires more energy of esters to transform from liquid to gaseous state this result into lower vapor pressure which gives out the higher flash point that means if I, somebody want to convert the esters from liquid state to gaseous state so it requires lot of energy that means that it is not that much easy to get into the vapor form Okay. Sentence 2, 3 and sentence 4 are slightly contradictory. That means that some of the esters may be volatile in nature, some of the esters that are non-volatile in nature. So in that circumstances, you have to choose depend on the temperature that you require, which type of esters that you want. Due to the polarity of ester molecule, it attracts change the metal surfaces which result in the formation of stronger film that translate to higher lubricity. It forms a stronger film on top of it. Whenever the cutting fluid as an ester, if you are using it falls, it will have a stronger affinity to form a layer on top of it and uh, act as a lubricant application. That means it will form a layer on that workpiece and it will act as a lubricant so that what will happen if the machining comes in the next time if I, if I am cutting once the cutting fluid already used so there is a lubricating layer if I am cutting second time it may slightly help in the form of lubricant because at the same time we are using also cutting fluid in that one. So synthetic ester oils formally these are the chemical combinations of vegetable oils, alcohols and acids. There are three, three things are there vegetable oils, alcohols and acids you combine these things you will get synthetic esters plus water and energy so what we want is here is a synthetic ester if at all we want the synthetic esters you have to combine vegetable oil alcohol and acids better performance characteristics than the normal esters which we have seen previously so the ester oils come not better than this one that means this synthetic esters are slightly gives much better characteristics from the point of machining and all those things has the viscosity index is about uh, 106 and all those things the flash point and all those things the beauty about this one is it is biodegradable in about 95 to 98 percentage that means moreover if you are using this cutting fluid and if you are recircling also and after the sometime if you want to dump onto the soil or something where if you are digging you have seen in the cutting fluid emissions uh, chapter where there are two types of disposing one is into the water bodies and other one into the soil bodies if you dump into the soil body also it degrades by 95 to 98 percent where the mineral oil is so less degradable that means this won't cause much problem or it has slightly minimal problems not much that means this is a very good oil from the point of biodegradability so people are nowadays talking about biodegradable polymers for the carry bags for the cups and all those things because the plastic is accumulating a huge amount and it is causing lot of problems to the nature if you can generate the biodegradable polymers including the from the grocery items to the biodegradable implants you can it will degrade and all those things some of the people talks about biodegradable implants also biodegradable implants and biodegradable internal fixations the one of the areas that is booming now and it is already in the trending where if the person got the fracture just you put the internal fixation device with respect to the time normally once the heel completes it start degrading so there are some polymers PLA polylactic acid PEZ these are the polymers which are the biodegradable just uh, I come across the word biodegradable so I just want to share this knowledge so that if somebody want to work not only in machining 
the machining of biodegradable implants that itself is a very good and new area as per 2018 is concerned. You may be watching this again and again. So, I am telling about 2017 currently, if you can take up the job like uh, biodegradable uh, based synthetic ester oils as your cutting fluids, if you choose your cutting suitable cutting tools which do not uh, changes the chemical structure of the polymer and you can generate the bio, you can cut the biodegradable implants. So, you have a biodegradable polymer that to be machined to your required size of your implant. You have a biodegradable synthetic oils or synthetic ester oils and the tool which do not impart its uh, elements to the implant. So, if you choose this type of system that is beautiful system. So, where you can get a good amount of publications at the same time you can get you can generate the commercial products also. So, some of you may be from the companies. So, for you this may be a good opportunity if you look in that direction just I am giving a preliminary glimpse. So, you can explore in that area. So, same thing you can do with the, the bio ceramics machining or the bio implants machining like titanium if at all you are machining you can use this degradable things and all those things even though the, if a film is forming it is biodegradable. So, your implant is there after some time it may degrade on surface and it will get a pure you get the original composition of your implant like titanium or something. So, emulsifiable synthetic fluids if you see this one these are obtained by the micro emulsion of this base oils formulated with anti corrosion and bio stability agent. So, then it is used in large number of machining applications meeting industry demand for higher production rates and lower cost owing to their eco friendly nature. These are the eco friendly cutting fluids where this if at all you are looking for high production rates at lower cost that means that these are all economic fluids. The cost in the market of these fluids is slightly lesser at the same time the application of these cutting fluids is at higher production rates. If I say that higher production rates means normally your input conditions are slightly harsh enough that means that I want to remove the material in faster so that I can complete work in a little time like depth of cut will be high, speed will be high and feed will be high and all those things. So, this is about uh, that uh, emulsifiable synthetic one applied where the cooling is more important than lubrication that means you have seen it if at all I am going to give high speed cutting velocity is high, depth of cut is very high and feed is very high if that is case what will happen? temperature also will be high. So, you can use this one where cooling is more prominent or important that means that this fluid is specially designed or one can design or one can get from the industry for if we are looking for the cooling applications rather than lubrication application. It does not mean that it do not have lubrication applications it will have, but the dominating uh, cooling characteristics are there. So, it will normally use for broaching, deep drilling and where the surface finish applications are required. This is about the emulsifiable synthetic fluid. If at all you want look for the industry where the temperature is very high in machining operation, you can go ahead with that emulsifiable synthetic fluids. Oleochemical synthetic fluids, these are the bio based bio degradable things. This is oils, these are taken from plant and animal fats. The, some of the plants also you can generate this thing bio based oils at the same time some of the animal fats. So, this animal fats normally those people take the non vegetarian and all those things. So, the fat may not be consumed by the people. So, in that circumstances they may be transferring to the biodegradable oil manufacturing industries where they can mix some of the oils from the plants, some of the oils from the animal fats and all those things so that you can combine it and you can get it. Okay. Another one is can the formulations of oleochemical substances like fatty acids and 
methyl esters, fatty acid, alcohol, fatty alzamines and glycerols occurs by the various chemical and the enzymatic reactions. This also can be generated by this process. By the chemical modification, thermal, oxidative and hydrolyte lytic stability of the vegetable oils can be improved. So, the people since this is a synthetic that means that it is developed at the laboratory, you can play with your ingredients. So, you can change by using some chemicals that is called chemical modification you can do it, thermal modification also you can do it, oxidative and hydrolytic stability of the vegetable oils can be improved. So, if you can change or play with the chemicals that you are going to use once you have synthesized this one and if you are playing with your chemicals normally thermal oxidative and hydrolytic stabilities of these fluids you can vary. So, this about the oleochemical synthetic fluids. So, Pantera MMEP oil this is one of the standard name for this one. So, this is a biodegradable and environmental friendly oil. So, if at all you are looking for the biodegradable point of view and environmental friendly so that you can give your operators a safe life at the same time safe environment to the surrounded people. Synthetic fluid synthesized by the seed oil and the molybdenum disulfate. Here you will have two things one is a synthetic uh, fluid uh, which is nothing but the seed oil at the same time you are also using molybdenum disulfide that is MOS2 maybe nanoparticle or you can go for the micro particle and all those things. So, these molybdenum disulfide particles are insoluble compounds. These are insoluble. What is the beauty? MOS2 allows the metal to proceed under the less friction and low torque. This is nothing but you can even say these are one type of uh, nano cutting fluids where the nanoparticles are suspended in the uh, cutting fluid. In that circumstances, you can what is happening if you are uh, sending with certain pressure the liquid and uh, nanoparticles or the microparticles will also travel. These particles will travel at high velocity and occupy the interior regions of chip and tool interface. So, that this MOS2, MOS2 itself you have seen that it is having low shear strength material. So, it will help in the sliding that is about the beauty about the MOS2 particles. So, some of the formulations of the seed oil includes canola, sunflower or soya bean oil normally in, in place of petroleum oil you can use this oil. That means, you can use sunflower oil or soya bean oil along with MOS2 particle. Check about the compatibility before you are using because uh, what are the other ingredients that you are using. Provides better heat dissipation and produces less smoke. It is better heat dissipation that means that uh, cooling properties are better at the same time it would not generate any smoke. Previously in the drawback of some of the vegetable oils that if you see there is a smoke generation is there, but here also here the that smoke generation is not there because it is one of the vegetable oils are there, but the thing is that they are modifying it at the laboratory scale with the chemicals. So, they are modifying it with the suitable chemicals which are eco friendly chemicals at the same time they are also adding molybdenum disulfide particles. This during the machining operation that is why high flash point. So, there is no problem of fire and all those things. So, especially this type of cutting fluids you can be used in tapping and heavy duty machining operations like broaching and all those things you can use it. So, that is the about the Pantera MMEP oil which is look a nano fluid where you have a seed oils plus uh, nanoparticles of MOS2 can be mixed along with suitable eco friendly chemicals at the laboratory scale where you can generate these things. So, another semi synthetic cutting fluids then normally semi synthetic cutting fluids are the fifth generation cutting fluids. Okay. There are first generation, second generation, there are many many generations of cutting fluids are there. It is composed of 5 to 30 percent mineral oil in concentration and water and relative additives will be there. So, it is uh, rust proof performance, it is very good 
from the point of lubrication and all those things and the green transparent solution gives good visibility and the particularity in the CNC machining where the system is very close enough in that circumstances normally this will be can be used actually. If you use what will happen if it is a good visibility normally CNC systems are closed systems in that circumstances operator may be watching from the glass that is uh, transparent enough to see what is the machining operation is going on as per my CNC codes that the system is running or not. For that purpose you need proper good visibility that is why you will always if at all your requirement is that you can go for this one. So, it can give the ec excellent cooling for the higher cutting speed so, that means that it has a better cooling property ok. It is having a cooling property, it is having a good visibility property like a transparent. So, person to person taste is different from person to person. So, every machining operation also have its own requirements. If your requirements falls in that range you can choose it. So, it uh, no stimulation to the skin that means that it is friendly to the skin there is no dermatological effect like contact dermatitis. So, epidermis if even though it falls on the your epidermis arm it may not have that allergic effect on all those things and it can go into outer dermis also of your skin it would not have much problem. So, that is why it is friendly to the operator it does not have the chlorine primary amines aromatic hydrocarbon sodium nitrate and other harmful ingredients that means it is completely or most of the times it is eco friendly to the operator. So, the problems posed is mist formation occurs because of the minerals foams and high detangibility. So, some of the other eco friendly cutting fluids if you see that are just if you what we are going to see is uh, we have already studied in the types of cutting fluids that is uh, liquid nitrogen as a cutting fluid, liquid CO2 as a cutting fluid. If you see here liquid nitrogen normally the temperature range is minus 160 degrees. So, it is a very it is a range basically 140 can be 150 can be 160, 170 like that. So, non on average if you see liquid nitrogen that is cryogenic fluids normally these are called cryogenic fluids ok. Cryogenic fluids whenever it comes into the normal uh, atmosphere what will happen you can see how the milling cutter is having a freezed type of thing. So, its cooling property is tremendous. So, wherever your requirement is cooling there you can go for this cryogenic fluids. So, that like liquid nitrogen, liquid CO2 and all those things. Other one is water vapor also some of the people will use water vapor also as a cutting fluid water what it can emit it has a only H2O. So, already your air has oxygen as well as hydrogen as a nitrogen and all those things. So, whatever it will emit it will can emit only oxygen and hydrogen ok. So, if you see the application of this it is one water vapor or cool water you can send at high jet and all those things. The beauty about this one is if at all you want to machine as I said no ductile regime machining of brittle materials and all those things that much you may not go with the vapors, but you can go for those type of machining materials which are uh, non FE based. If you are going for aluminum work pieces type of uh, thing which are non FE based work pieces where because of the water if it is not rusting then you can go for this one. So, some of the commercially available eco friendly cutting fluids you can see that is one of the thing is eco line cutting fluid. This is one of the commercially available cutting fluid which you can purchase. When added to the water in the ratio of 1 is to 40 or 1 is to 20 it gives a stable emulsion which provide excellent cooling with no smoke. There is no smoke and excellent cooling properties it can generate or it can provide for that purpose if a high speed machining you can go for it. It does not contain chlorinated compounds or nitrates so, that means that because of the nitrates cancer is one of the biggest problem. So, the operator may not 
come across the cancers at the same time chlorinated compounds also are less that means that uh, dermatitis folliculitis this are type of diseases people may not get the operator who is working may not uh, be faced works excellent operation with required rapid cooling so it has a better cooling properties if at all i want uh, cooling at faster rate that means that machining region is sudden it is a severe plastic deformation which is taking place at faster rate in that circumstances you need a rapid cooling that is faster cooling for that purpose you can go for eco line cutting fluid lubricant for heavy rolling grinding and extruding and stamping as well as cutting applications also you can use this for cutting grinding grinding also is a subtractive process cutting also is a subtractive manufacturing process you can use it prevent welding of metals during the metal working process that means that built up edge formation won't be taking place because it is acting as a lubricant it is acting as a rapid cooling that means that uh, the sticking nature it prevent because of its liquid lubricant nature so it is having a better cooling properties the bottom line of this slide is it is having a rapid cooling characteristics with slightly lubricating which helps in subtract to manufacturing like a cutting grinding and all those things welding especially in terms of grinding operation if you see the chips will weld when the next run comes assume that a chip is not going out or it is adhering to that particular portion of the workpiece the next round or the next upcoming abrasive particles will try to weld to the workpiece surfaces so those type of things it will prevent so another one is bio aluminum cutting oil this is also one of the commercially available eco friendly cutting fluids if you see this the beauty about this one is toxicity will be low and low volatility which helps in multi performance at lower cost so volatility less that means that there is no fumes formation at lower temperature and toxic it is not toxic or it is minimal toxic that means that there is no problem for the operator and all those things used as a machining coolant that means that it will be normally used as a cooling for that one if it is for the cooling normally you can go for any type of subtractive process that is called machining process act as a corrosion inhibitor that means that it will form a layer on top of it even though atmospheric moisture come into contact of the product it may not corrode that product because it will act as a corrosion inhibitor that's about the bio aluminum cutting oil the summary what all we have seen till now is uh, various vegetable oils which we have seen second we have seen the synthetic and semi synthetic cutting fluids liquid co2 and n2 we have not talked as i said no this cryogenic fluids we have talked uh, much elaborative way in the types of cutting fluids synthetic and semi synthetic bio cutting fluids in normally available bio cutting fluids that is uh, commercially available and we are going to see the conclusions in in the next slide the conclusions are nothing but the only one conclusion that is go green and uh, use the cutting fluids which are non toxic and helpful for the operator even though it falls like neem oil or some other oils if it falls uh, karanja seed oil neem oil coconut oil sunflower oil these are the oils okay these are all individual oils individual oils will have individual nature some of better coolants some of better lubricants you have to choose right amount of volume of these fluids you can mix if and only if they are chemically compatible and you can make out a good composition which has better lubricating property better cooling property or you as you add those amounts of this cutting fluids depend on your application your application is high depth of cut high speed and low speed you need higher lubricating characteristics in that circumstances 
you should go ahead with lubricating property vegetable oils more and cooling properties less vice versa if at all i am going for high speed machining where the temperature generation is very high in that circumstances you just go ahead with high amount of cooling type of cutting fluids rather than lubricating type of cutting fluids and only thing is that you have to strike the balance at the same time you should go ahead with suitable emulsifiers because whenever you add to the water to make it a composition you should able to emulsify it so these type of cutting fluids the people who are in the bachelor level in the master level in the phd level they can play with the amount of these cutting fluids so so that they can come up with good properties that they want for their particular application i am saying for the metal cutting application however some people if at all who are watching may be looking for the metal forming applications also this for the metal forming applications the dominating should be lubricating characteristics those people who are looking for the dominating lubricating properties just choose those oils which are eco friendly and you can and most important thing is that cost 17% of your product cost is from the literature says it is from the cutting fluid cost so if you can get the cutting fluid as economic price that is good if you can use like a minimum quantity cutting fluid where you can have force convection as well as tool life will be increased so this about this one so next in the upcoming class we just to go ahead with rheology and thermal aspects of the cutting fluids where uh, we see about uh, what is rheology rheology is nothing but the flow and deformation just and thermal aspects how to calculate the thermal conductivity of this fluid there are standard equipment are there just you can if the thermal conductivity of this fluid is good that means that it can take out the temperature in a great way oh at the same time flowability of this cutting fluid is good that means that it can go to each nook and corner of the cutting yeah. machining region okay so this also we will see okay so at the same time we will also see advanced cutting fluid that is called bio nano cutting fluids where we were seeing one of the semi synthetic bio cutting fluids where the particles are there mos2 is mixed with some of the bio cutting fluids or some of the mineral oils where some of the research our laboratory we have done and we are demonstrate here not much things that we just demonstrate you that uh, how this uh, nano bio cutting fluids are going to help one side you have a bio cutting fluid on another side you have a nano particle just blend it uniformly then you use it so as i said these particles are suspending at very good uniformity locations uniform locations that will be good so what this mos2 particles are better lubricants and you choose your bio uh, liquid state having the better cooling properties okay divide this and rule okay there is a concept called divide and rule you just choose your liquid as a better coolant and particle as a better lubricant coolant doesn't mean it is 100% coolant or something it will have its own uh, lubricating properties and all those things so it you can come up with good cutting fluids thank you for this particular class we come in the upcoming class to study about rheology thermal aspects as well as bio nano cutting fluids okay which some people they say it as nano fluids in the refrigeration in air conditioning also they will be used okay so thank you once again for listening patiently of uh, some of the chemical things in the mechanical classes